Good afternoon, folks. We're here again with the, the Bible. The Bible is God's Word. It's the only Word of God that humanity have. Only the Bible is from God. Only the Bible is from the only God who exists, the God of the Bible. There isn't any other God. If you're worshipping some other God other than the God of the Bible, that only exists in your imagination, my friends. There's only one true and living God, and that's the God of the Bible. And the sad reality is, the sad reality is that most of us are far more interested in what's on telly tonight than reading the Bible, reading the Word of God, that God has took the time and trouble to provide for humanity. You're more interested in ent being entertained, amused. You're more interested in your high score on some computer game, maybe. That's a sad reality. People are distracted by so many things, by the, the stuff in life. The stuff in life, you know, the, the amusement, the relationships. Tariq. Hello, my friend. You well? Good. You been buying a bike? Sorry? You been buying a bike? Yeah. You got a bike? No, just the same. Just the same, my friend. What's that? What do you say? I can't hear what you're saying under that uh, thing there. Hello, my friend. So there's only one true living God, and that's the God of the Bible. Is humanity's God. You and I, if we're part of the human race, we're part of humanity, aren't we? There's only one race in the world, isn't there? The human race. Black, brown, white, yellow skin. They're all human beings created by one God, and that's the God of the Bible. That's one, that's one thing we have in common. We're all part of the human race. Male and female, there's only two sexes, two genders, there's not many. God only created two sexes, male and female. And if you're a male or a female, a human being, you're part of the human race created by the God of the Bible. He's the creator, you see. The God of the Bible, he created everything. There wasn't anything made that wasn't made by him. He's the one who knit you together in your mother's womb at conception, where life begins. Life begins at conception in the mother's womb. The God of the Bible, he knit you together. He determined your life when you'd have life. He formed your inward parts in your mother's womb, the God of the Bible. You see, there's nothing left to accident, nothing left to chance. There's no such thing as luck, either good luck or bad luck, in God's creation. Everything works out perfectly in, the, in God's creation. The God of the Bible is not a puny God. He's not a puny God who created everything and then walked away and left it to exist apart from his purpose. He has a purpose. The God of the Bible has a plan. He has a decree. A plan since he began time until he ends time at a time when he's sovereignly ordained already. The God of the Bible. He's going to end the world. The world isn't going to end because of your carbon footprint. Trying to prevent the world ending by reducing your carbon, carbon footprint, my friend, is, is a useless, futile exercise. You can't save the planet by recycling your rubbish, becoming an unhealthy vegan. You can't save the planet by separating your rubbish, reducing plastics. You can't do it, my friend. It's a futile exercise. The planet is going to be uh, ended at a time of God's choosing. He's already said it's going to happen. He's going to roll the world up like a scroll. He's going to end the world at a time that he's already chosen. You see, the, the God of the Bible is not a puny God, indifferent to what's happening in the world. He's sovereign. He began time and he's going to end time. And the world won't end any time sooner than God's appointed time. And so your creator, your creator, the one 
who you've offended every day of your life, the creator of everything, God, the God of the Bible, he said in his word, you could read it for yourself, if you pick up your Bible, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters, and God said, God said, the God of the Bible said, let there be light, and there was light. The God of the Bible has infinite power. He's not a puny God, he's not a pink, fluffy teddy bear waving a rainbow flag celebrating pride. The God of the Bible is holy, my friends. The God of the Bible, he has an absolute standard of right and wrong. He determines what love is. I hear a lot these days about love is love. Yes, we agree. Love is love. That's like saying blue is blue. Or purple is purple. Of course, love is love. But the God of the Bible, he determines what love is. He sets the boundaries, not us. He has an absolute standard of right and wrong. The God of the Bible, you see. And he's the one who made you. He's the one who determined what sex you'd be. He's the one who made you either male or female. And the little male that you were born or the little female that you were born, you'll remain right up until you stand before the God who made you. You can't change your sex. If you're confused about your sex, you're confused not because God made you another gender. Because he tells us in the Bible, he made them male and female and that's it. Male and female, God made them. And if you're confused about that, you're confused because the enemy of your souls, the devil, that vile creature who hates humanity, who causes division, who puts hatred and bitterness in your heart and unforgiveness, that vile creature who causes you to hate your fellow human beings, the devil. If you're confused, you're confused because he's blinded your minds. That's what the Bible says. You can read it for yourself. The devil, he holds you captive to do his will. Humanity, humanity are lost. Most of humanity are lost. There's two ways, my friend. There's a way, a broad way, that many find that leads to destruction. And most people are on their way to a devil's hell. Most people, after death, are going to stand before a very angry God. But there's another way, another way that leads to life. Do you have life? Are you just existing? Do you have real life? Do you have eternal life? You do? You have eternal life? How do you know, my friend? Yeah, you will be, my friend, but you're going to, worse than that, worse than, more terrifying than that, you're going to see God. You're going to see God. God, God created, the God of the Bible, he created the devil, my friend. He's far more terrifying than any devil. No, the, Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is your creator, whether you agree with that or not. It doesn't matter what you believe. What matters is what's true. See, we believe this because it's true. It isn't true because we believe it. And maybe there are. Well, there are people who choose to worship the devil, but the reality is whether you choose to tip the hat to the devil or not, you're either a slave to the devil and sin, and the devil says jump and you ask how high. You're either a slave to the devil and sin, or you're a slave to Jesus Christ, your God, and a slave to righteousness. Either way, you're a slave, my friends. We're all slaves to something. The reality is, you see, we've all offended the God of the Bible. And that's not healthy. That's not safe. Offending the God of the Bible, the God who gives you air in your lungs, that's not a safe place to be. You're his enemy. In fact, you're, it's worse than that. It's worse than you've always offended him all of your life. At conception, where life begins, when God took the time and trouble to form your inward parts in your mother's womb, when God made you at conception, 
God knit you together. You, you're his enemy. You're the enemy of your creator. Do you realize you're an enemy of God? You say, well, I've done, never done much wrong. I'm not as bad as Hitler. You might even profess not to hate God. But your lack of, unbelie your lack of belief, your unbelief in what God has done to save you from his anger is clear evidence to him and the rest of the world that you hate God. You see, humanity are God haters. Humanity don't like the idea that there's a higher power that we're answerable to. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but you are part of creation. You're not the creator. You are created by the creator, the God of the Bible. And I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but you're not an autonomous being. The God of the Bible created you. He didn't create you so that you could live your life how you see fit. Taking advantage of vulnerable people. Being dishonest in business. Lying and stealing. Well, I'm, I'm afraid you do, my dear. But it's not what you call it. It's the truth. The truth can set you free, my dear. The truth can set you free from your love of sin and, and, and reconcile you to a God that you're currently his enemy. That's a wonderful thing. It's good news. Why are we celebrating Christmas? We're celebrating Christmas again because that's a time when God became a living human being. 2,000 years ago, God, the creator of everything, put on flesh. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Who's the Word? The Word is Jesus Christ. When did God put on flesh? 2,000 years ago, God, that little baby, born of a virgin, that miracle birth, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they'll call his name Emmanuel. Which means, which means God with us. God with us. The creator of everything. Your creator. The one who knows your thought life. The one who knows everything about you, my friend. There's nothing hidden from his eyes. He was born of a virgin. A miracle birth. Angels announced his appearing. So there's wonderful signs. Miracles pointing to the birth of Jesus Christ. Where to be born in that stable. And it was all predicted centuries before. God did exactly what he said he was going to do. God always does what, he's, what he says he's going to do. He never changes his mind. He never changes his plan. He's going to do everything that he says. And it's written, contained in the Bible here. You could read the Bible and come to a knowledge of the truth. Put down, put down Candy Crush, my dear. Switch. Switch off Netflix and read the Word of God. Put down the alcohol and read the Word of God, my dear. You don't have to remain an enemy of God. None of you need to remain under the wrath, the anger of God any longer. There's good news. God sent His Son, the Creator of all things. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, a miracle birth predicted centuries before. And no prophecy. Only God can predict the future, can't he? No prophecy. No uh, predicting the future ever came by the act of human will. But holy men of God spoke as they were carried along by God's Holy Spirit, my friends. The Bible is full of prophecy. The Bible, unlike any other supposed holy book, the Bible is full of prophecy, accurate, detailed prophecy that's been fulfilled accurately so far, 100%. The next time the Bible predicts something and gets it wrong will be the first time. Think about that, my friends. This is a wonderful gift from our Creator, the Bible. He hasn't given us the Quran. The Quran is not from God. That's a, a book written by men. It's no, it doesn't have fulfilled prophecy. He does no hope for humanity. The Book of Mormon, same thing. The Watchtower magazine. 
They're not from God, my friends. The Bible is from your Creator. It was written over 1,500 years. Think about this. Over 1,500 year span, the Bible was put together from Genesis to Revelation, written by over 40 different authors. Most of them didn't know each other, so nobody conspired in secret. Nobody got together to spoil the LGBT agenda. That's not what happened. The Bible is from your Creator. It's from God. Your Creator, the one who knows you better than you know yourself. Hello, my friend. Are you well? That's good. That's good. I'm good. I'm, I'm better than I should be. I'm better than I deserve. Because I, I deserve hell, you see. I'm a, I'm a sinner. I know. I know. I know that. The whole... The whole of the human race has sinned against their creator, you see. And the whole of the human race deserve his wrath, his anger, his punishment in hell forever. But Christians aren't going to that place, you see. Christians aren't going to hell because they have a savior. You see, God, the creator, he requires a blood sacrifice for sin. The shedding of blood for sin. God requires the blood sacrifice for sin and if you have no blood sacrifice for your sin then you're still an enemy of God you're not in a safe place my friend he knows your thought life he knows your heart he knows everything you do in secret and everything you do in secret will be brought into the light one day when you stand before the God of the Bible you're not going to stand before a God who's pleased with your efforts you're not going to stand before a God who can be bribed by your religious duties, fasting and praying and visiting Lewis, confessing your sins to a Roman Catholic priest. You're not going to stand before that kind of God who will accept your good works and allow you entrance into his presence. You see, the only work, the only work that God accepts as payment for your sin is what he did on that cross. 2,000 years ago, that little baby born of a virgin, he grew up, he, he went to that cross, he went to that cross willingly, he said, nobody, nobody takes my life, Jesus said. This is God in flesh, your creator, he said he could have called down legions of angels, legions of angels he could have called down to rescue him from wicked men who wanted to crucify him. They hated him without a cause. Jesus, he never did anything sinful. He's a perfect human being. The only good person to ever walk the face of this planet, you see. But humanity hated him. Why did humanity, why did humanity hate Jesus Christ so much? Well, the answer is found in the Bible. With Jesus speaking to religious folk. And he said, you are trying to kill me. And they denied it. They said, what are you talking about? We're not trying to kill you. They lied. He said, you're trying to kill me. You hate me because I testify that your works are evil. Your works are evil. See, God has given humanity a conscience. You and I know right from wrong. We're not like the animal kingdom that just act on instinct. You and I, God has written his law on our hearts that's what that's how we know that it's wrong to lie and steal that's how we know it's wrong to dishonor our dad and mom that's how we know it's wrong to commit adultery to blaspheme God's name we know these things are wrong because God has written his law on our hearts my friends and all Jesus did was point out to wicked people what they knew already and he said, you hate me because I testify, I bear witness that your works are evil. On one occasion, Jesus Christ, he said, this is a wicked, a wicked and evil generation. How much more this generation than Jesus' generation? They weren't marrying men and men in Jesus' time. They weren't telling five-year-old children that they could change sex in Jesus' time. They weren't murdering babies in the womb in their millions in Jesus' time, were they? How much more would Jesus call this generation a wicked, evil 
generation. You see, God knows your heart. You can fool mankind, you can pretend before your friends that you're a nice person, that you're good, that you're an upstanding person. You can fool your mates down the Freemasons Lodge. They can think well of you, but God knows your heart. That's a terrifying thought, isn't it? It's a terrifying thing to stand before the one true and living God. God knows your heart. What is highly esteemed among men, what is highly esteemed among men, is an abomination before God. You can be a religious person. You can become a, an imam. You can be the pope, a nun. You can attend that cathedral up the road there. You can be a religious individual. But your sin remains. Please, water. Water, please. Yeah, st still water. No, no, water, honestly. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. I swore at you last time, and I'm not going to do that today. Oh, okay. You have my apologies, all right? Oh, thank you, Because I think what you do is good. Thank you. That's, That's good, good, my friend. Thank you. You see, the you, you can fool mankind. You can fool your friends, your family, your work colleagues. You can fool all kinds of people, can't you? You can deceive a lot of people. There's a lot of deceptive people out here today, deceiving others. Women cheating on their husbands, men cheating on their wives. You can deceive all kinds of people, can't you? But you can't, you can't deceive God. You can't fool God, my friends. He's the one who sees everything. His eyes are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. And he has an absolute standard of right and wrong. And it's his heaven. It's his heaven. And he decides who goes there. So where are you going? Are you right with God? Have you come to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ says, come to me, all you weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus Christ is your only hope, my friends. You're an enemy of God. You're, you've sinned enough already, and you can't undo that for God to throw you into a devil's hell. You see, it's God's hell too. The most terrifying thing, the most terrifying thing about hell is God's presence, God's very presence. That's the, God's place of punishment for all those who reject what he did on the cross. You see, if you don't believe, if you don't believe in what Jesus Christ did on that cross was for you and your sins, then you're still in your sin and you're about to die in your sin. And it can come any time. I don't know if you've heard or not, but there's, there's a, a new, a worldwide phenomenon. There's a worldwide phenomenon of sudden death. People are dropping down dead suddenly these days for no apparent reason. I know it's a worldwide phenomenon. Very strange thing. It's a very strange thing. And that could be you. That could be you, my friends. That could be me. See, our day of death is appointed by God. And we might not get an opportunity on our deathbed to turn our life to give God uh, the dregs of our life on our deathbed, we might not get opportunity on the death, our deathbed. We might be taken suddenly. You could be taken this very night, my friends, and then it's too late. It's game over. After death, there's no opportunity to change religion after death. There's no opportunity to repent after death. The moment that your foot slides into eternity, my friends, it's game over. Do you not think you should be making a horror video of Chad Are you afraid, my friend? You should be afraid. God is a fearful being. He's the most terrifying being in existence. And it's wise. It's very wise to fear God. It's foolish not to fear God. This nation used to be a God-fearing nation, didn't it, once over? Maybe some of your grandparents or great-grandparents, they feared God. They believed the Bible. We still swear on the Bible. If you're taken to court, you know, you'll have opportunity to swear on God's word, the Bible, as an expression that you're going to tell the truth. You might not do it because, you know, mankind's heart is wicked and deceptive and desperately sick. But we used to revere God's word in this country, didn't we? We were God-fearing people at one time. And this country was far safer then. There wasn't so much knife crime back then, was there? The nation 
The nation was far safer then. We weren't facing such a, a, a collapse of society like we're facing now. We weren't facing a nuclear war like we are now, you know, that bad man Putin, that, that bogey man Putin. It may, be, it may be started a nuclear war, we're told. We're threatened, aren't we, through the media, terrified again. Some catastrophe going to end humanity. You see, nobody, nobody takes you from this world any sooner than God's appointed time, my friends. That's reassuring. Your time, your time like my time, is in the hands of another. It's in the hands, not in our hands. It's not in Putin's hands. It's not in any terrorist's hands. It's not in any, any drug dealer's hands. Some angry drug dealer that's exploiting others for money. That's wicked. God knows your heart, remember. Your hands, your time isn't in the hands of some angry drug dealer or some angry dictator like Putin, is it? Your time is in the hands of an all-powerful God. Your time is in the hands of your Creator. Your Creator. He's the one who determines the number of days that you live. You see, the Bible says it's appointed, it's fixed already for mankind to die once. Die once. There's nobody comes back after death. That's game over. It's the end. There's no reincarnation. There's no second chance. There's no purgatory. After death, that's it. It's just, it's judgment, my friend. After death comes the judgment. You're going to stand before the God of the Bible and give an account of everything you've thought, said, and done. And that's why it's such a terrifying thing. It's a, a fearful thing to stand before the one true living God. It'll leave no stone unturned, you see. All of, If you stand before God, you don't have to, but if you stand before God and meet Him as an angry judge, it'll leave no stone unturned, my friends. No stone will be left unturned. All, all of your sin, all of your sin throughout all of your life will be on display. There'll just be you and your Creator and all your sin on display. Terrifying. That's why we should fear God. That's why we should fear Him above everything. You know Jesus Christ, He said, don't fear mankind. Don't fear mankind who can only destroy your body. And after that, no more He can do. Mankind, the worst that they can do to you is kill you, right? That's the worst they can do. But that's not the worst thing that can happen to you. There's an eternity to be had, my friends. And that's why Jesus said, don't fear mankind. The fear of man is a snare, a trap. Don't fear mankind who can only kill you. And after that, he can't do any more to you, but fear him, fear him, who after he's taken your life, has the power to throw your soul into hell. If your soul ends up in that place, and it doesn't have to, it's a place, it's a place where you'll suffer forever and ever, with no escape. No escape, my friends. Just torment forever and ever and ever. And God's anger poured out upon you forever and ever, with no escape. No escape in hell, my friends. If your soul ends up in that dreadful place, there's no comfort in hell. There's no family in hell. There's no friends in hell. There's no pleasure in hell. There's no joy in hell. No peace in hell. Think about that, my friend. That's why it's such a terrible... Nobody's listening to you. Well, you're listening. Yeah. Why are you swearing, my... my we're we're in purgatory. No, there's no peace here, man. What's that? You think we can get... Because you can get mental peace in this realm. Yeah. You Jesus, Jesus is a prince of peace. You can get peace in your heart, Thank yeah. Thank you. But you're not getting any peace, like, practically, because this world's a fucking mess. I know it's a mess, I know. But it's always been a mess. It's yeah. been a mess since Adam and Eve sinned against God. Before that. Well, no, it was everything was good before that. Yeah, but the earth isn't like 2,600 years old like the Bible says. Spoilers. Well, why not? Why can't it be? Well, if you stretch time, if you take out, if you take into uh, time dilation, then possibly, yeah. But other than that, that's the only way it could be 2,600. It's still 1.4 billion years old, <coughs> roughly. 
Well, that's extremely awful. Well, they, the they the can't day, measure that. How way. did everything come into existence from nothing in God, the first place? Well, God created everything. Well, if you believe in creationism, that's what you believe. I don't. I believe in like a, a time immemorial. Right, well, I believe the universe why, don't, why don't you believe this? <coughs> because it's all messed up by human beings who don't How do you know? Clue. How would you know that? Well, because the powers that be edit it. They, they how would, cut how, books. They how cut would you know? Have you seen how much wisdom is in the book of Enoch? The Book of Enoch is in scripture, my friend. It's, it's weird stuff in there as well. Don't yeah, get me wrong. It 